Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in John chapter 7 verse 10, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, and John chapter 7 verse 9. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for all you've done. We thank you for being such a consistent father, a loving God. We love you too. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. So John chapter seven, verse 10. But after this, his brothers had gone up to the feast when he also went up, not publicly. Then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. All right. And so um, this is um, speaking about when Christ um, chose not to go to a, a major feast um, because he knew that there the um, the the people were plotting to kill him. So he was going to go, but he didn't want to go publicly. Um, he wanted to go privately. And then he would make a public appearance about halfway through the feast, right? And so um, for Christ, um, this was because he, he knew that his brothers did not believe. It says, but after this, his brothers had gone up to the feast. So they were talking to him about um, if you if you want to be um, publicly known, you shouldn't do things in secret. You should make yourself known to everyone and to your disciples, right? And so Christ knew that if he did that, then the timing of everything would be off. He was going with the timing of the father, not when people thought he should be doing things if he was the Messiah. He was the Messiah. He did not have to prove that. The Holy Spirit will reveal that to people, but that was something that they were going to have to have faith and believe, right? And so his brothers did not believe. None of his brothers believed in him is what the scripture had said in John chapter seven. And so it says, but after his brothers had gone up to the feast, then he also went up. So it was not Christ's time yet. He said that for his brothers, it's always their time and it, they can always go and do what they're going to do. But for him, he, he his timing was with the timing of the father. So it says, but after his brothers had gone up to the feast then he also went up not publicly but in private and so the thing that the lord had showed me about this scripture is that this is a reflection of the times that we live in there are many um scoffers in the last day who are always going to speak words that are contrary to the the season and times that we live in right so as Christ speaks to those who have personal relationship with him those who are in alignment with him they are going to hear what the father says and heed what the father says right but as for Christ, um, but as for the world, they're always going to be pointing the finger and saying when things should be happening, if that were true. They have an if mentality about the Christ who is the anointed one. So we have to have a mindset that is not about, um, that is not about um, what the world thinks that we should be doing. It's, it has to do with what the father thinks that we should be doing. Right. And so when the world is pointing at, um, our, our lives and, and the situations that we are going through and saying, oh, well, if it were that season, if Christ was going to return, if, if, if that means that they are operating from a place of a lack of faith. They need to see things in order for things to be considered the season. But that in that mentality, then you're already too late, right? You're going to always be too late as it return as it as it relates to the return of Christ. You don't want to believe when you see as it relates to the return of Christ. You want to believe and then you will eventually see. All right. And so it says, but after this, his brothers had gone up to the feast. Then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. So Christ is going to come, but he's going to come when he decides to come. 
right? This is, this has nothing to do with um, the the people as it relates to what they think the timing should be about, right? So the fulfillment of the scriptures will come to pass, but Christ is going to come whenever the Father tells him to come. It has nothing to do with um, when the people think that he should come, right? All right, so let's look at Hebrews 4, chap chapter 4, verse 16. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So as times grow further and further into the last days, um, we are going to have to draw nearer and nearer to the throne of God because the the strain and the 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 time is going to press in on us. So as we are becoming more and more pressured the enemy sees the season he knows the season he can see and sense when um the fulfillment of the prophecies is occurring right he may not be able to know exactly the timing, but he's watching as well because he knows that his assignment and his 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 time is going to be very short once the actual tribulation occurs. It says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. So that grace is that unmerited favor, those gifts, those things that God is pouring out on us freely without us having deserved them. So we need to go with confidence. Why do we have confidence? Because we are justified. The blood justifies us to be able to draw near to the throne of grace. So instead of receiving um, scrutiny or the, um, the, the guards coming to get us um, for drawing near to the king, instead, we're going to receive grace and mercy. So remember, you're not perfect. You're a believer, but you're not perfect. Perfect. So when Christ died for us, he atoned for all of our sins. So when we approach that throne, our past, present, and future sins have been taken care of, but that doesn't mean that we don't sin, right? It's just not counted against us. So as we come to that throne, we're going to first receive mercy, because it says, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace this is a throne of grace it says that we may receive mercy right so that means that you can approach you can approach god the father you can approach the king he's gonna put out his hand to you instead of taking a scepter and banging you with it or striking you down he's going to receive you right so he's going to give you mercy because you have that that blood covering you can approach him it says that we may receive mercy and find grace. So find that thing that it is that we are looking for. So as the time and the season gets long, um, shorter and shorter, we are now closer than we've ever been to that transition point. Christ is wanting us to, um, Christ is wanting us to, uh, go forth and, and receive that mercy and find that grace. So find that thing. And I love that word find because you may not approach the throne of grace and immediately you just boom, you get exactly what you need. Because remember, the father is a good father. He's going to give us our needs. If you're asking for bread, he's going to give you bread, right? So he's not going to give you a stone. But at the same time, he's also addressing our motives. He's addressing what's inside of us so that we can know and, and be alert to the times that are, are um, upon us. And so we can know what's inside of us right sometimes your motive can be wrong for what you're asking it's not wrong to ask for a place to live but it's wrong to put a, a place to live a house a car before God before the will of the father and God knows if you're going to do that God knows if you are prioritizing that over his will right and so he's not just gonna just pour out everything that you're asking for when you come to the throne it says that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need receive mercy and find grace so we need to find that grace 
right? It talks about the word that we are working out our own soul salvation with fear and trembling. So as we are before the Father, we can we can um, sit and, and talk to him, receive from him, um, understand ourselves better. The more you go to the throne, the, the deeper you're going to get into that thing. And you're going to be asking with better motives. You're going to ask for the right things. You're going to be able to receive rightly and not just because of something that you want or desire right and it's maybe a part of your flesh it, it, he is wanting us to ask with right motive he is wanting us to ask from a, a good position he, he's going to give us that mercy but we're going to be able to find grace so whatever that thing is that we are in need of right so the timing is at hand where people are are putting pressure on on believers and 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 the even within the community of believers who are supposed to be believers you have wise and unwise brides who are saying they are believers but they don't believe at all in the coming of the lord and so they might be sometimes on the side of a scoffer or they might be sometimes on the side of a believer but either way sometimes that pressure can come in on you you can just go to the throne of grace and receive that grace receive that mercy right and and you can you can ask God the father for whatever it is that you need right in that time but either way the God is not moved in his coming um, by anything as it relates to um what people desire right what people are wanting and what people think that is the good timing for Christ to come it has to with the will of the father all right and so the third verse that the lord gave me was john chapter 7 verse 9 after saying this he remained in galilee so this is the verse before the first verse so christ was letting them know um um he he's not going i'm not gonna go this is not my time right it's your time you go but then later it is his time, right? So God has already let us know that verse 10 is coming, right? Verse 10 is coming. He's privately letting us know that verse 10 is coming. This is something private to the believer, right? There's always going to be the unbeliever there who does not believe, but to the believer, he's already revealed that this is this is soon to come, right? But but out in the open for others, um, he's letting us know that um he is he is going to for for the world um at large oh he's remaining in galilee that just means he's remaining in the safe place he's staying in the heavenlies and this is what they think this is this is what is is known um um openly to his his pe to to the world right but privately he's going to reveal himself and we know that to be the time of his return and so even though and i always love this this scripture because i, I always questioned it like why would christ say that he's not going to go and then he goes well because he's going to go when he's ready to go he's not going to go when man wants him to go he's going to go once the father says go so even if he told us in one second i'm not going yet it's not my time and then in the second after he says he's going to go that's because he's not on our time he's not he, he's not um to answer to man for all his moves he answers to God so once God says go that's when he goes right once God says okay now is the time that's when he goes right so just always remember God Christ is not susceptible to man man is is susceptible to God so it, he is sovereign over over the times the seasons and all of these things it's not for him to answer to oh this prophecy and that prophecy was fulfilled so now he has to come tomorrow that's not how it works God is the one who's in charge he's the one who says when it's time to go right and so we just have to have faith we just have to believe that God is who he says he is. He's sovereign and he's going to do what he says he's going to do. Amen. All right, you guys, just let this go before that throne. When you have a need, don't worry about exact timings and, and what people say should be. Go before the throne. Go before the Father. You need insight about the times and the season. Go before the Father. Sit there. Wait on him be subject to him not to your own timing and then let him reveal what he wants to reveal amen all right you guys let's pray thank you father god for all you've done 
We love you. We praise you. We ask you, Jesus, to help us to be patient in these last days. Help us to continue looking up, continue believing. No matter what anyone says, help us to be subject to you and not to um, our own will, Lord God. Show us a way. Help us to continue to wait and watch for you because that's what you said to do. We love you and we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. If there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would actually like to rededicate your heart to the Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me and also believe it with all your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, you see me, you see where I've gotten off. Lord God, forgive me. Help me to get back on track. Help me to hear your voice again. Help me to follow your lead and not my own lead. Lord God, let let the pressures of the world and life not be my driving factor, Lord God. Let my job not be my driving force. Let people not be the thing that drives me, Lord God. Help me to be driven by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, um, if you've prayed those prayers and you believe those prayers and Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption and no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth and he's gonna do just that, amen. Um, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Um, also go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. All right, take care and be blessed.